Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shakayla Mitwan, and I'm a full-time reseller. I sell predominantly on Poshmark as well as eBay and Mercari. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you all what sold this week. If you all watched my last week's video, you know that that week was really, really tough for me as far as sales go. Poshmark was struggling, eBay and Mercari, they were all struggling for me. But this week was a little bit better. I did see some improvements. So we're gonna go from app to app sharing each sale and I'm gonna start off with Poshmark. So Poshmark improved just a little bit this week. And I started off the week with a sale. And I'm gonna share with you all a little bit how I accomplished this sale. Um, I sent out a mass message to all of my shoppers. The first thing you'll want to do is click the wrench in the top right corner, then click more seller tools. Afterwards, click my shoppers and select all of your shoppers. I clicked about 500 shoppers of my most recent shoppers, people that have liked things, people that have engaged with my Poshmark page. And I sent out a mass message stating, I'm having, I'm kicking off this Tuesday with a sale. And if you bundle two or more items, you will get 50% off of your purchase. So this was a really, really good sale. I honestly thought I would have gotten more buyers, but I actually secured one sale. And one sale was good enough for me, um, seeing as though I, was barely getting sales the week before. So this is how I got this first sale. It was a bundle of a Liz Claiborne houndstooth jacket and a Zara over the knee boot. And this lady, she got this bundle for $50. So she got a really good deal. She got some staple pieces for an outfit. And um, the Liz Claiborne jacket I had up for 27 and the Zara boots I had them up for 80. So she got some really good items and she got them for $50. So I was really happy that that sale worked. And I, although I did want some more shoppers, I got at least one. And so if you are having slow sales, you should look into trying to do that. Just send out a message stating that you're having a sale. Um, and I also stated that the sale was for 24 hours. That kind of gives people a push to go ahead and get their shopping done pretty quickly instead of waiting. So um, putting a time limit in that message, telling them to bundle two or more items that gets you multiple sales and sending it to as many shoppers as possible. This will ensure that you can get at least one to, or two sales um, in a 24 hour period. So it was a great way for me to kick off my week and kind of build my morale for the work week. I sold some fry slip on shoes and I've had these fry slip on shoes for a while. I had a gray pair that sold about maybe three months ago. And um, this was a really good sale because the person just came in and bought the shoes for $75. Um, they didn't send any offers, so I was pleased with that. Next thing that sold was a Calvin Klein backlash dress. I had the person come in with a $15 offer and I didn't want to take $15, but I had had the dress for probably two or two years, I, I believe. And so um, I went back and forth and I finally decided to take $20 and let the person have the dress. Next thing I sold on Poshmark were some Madewell Cali Demi boot jeans. And these were black jeans, they were brand new with tag. And I had the jeans up for $90 and they ended up selling for 65. Um, this person, they came, actually I sent out an offer on these jeans for around 80, $85. And then the per this person came in and they offered 65, so I accepted. That's actually about what I was wanting for the jeans. Um, I, I like to make sure that I put my prices up and so that whatever someone offers me, it's usually reasonable unless they just completely lowball me and it's like, okay, you're not even in the, and the spear of offers I want. So yes, they offered me 65. I took it and they got a brand new pair of Madewell jeans. The last thing that I sold on Poshmark was a puff sleeve faux leather dress. And I got this dress from Shein. It didn't quite work for me and I ended up selling it for $21. I had the dress up for 35. And I even had this dress posted on eBay as well in, um, in Mercari and it got so much attention on both of those <laughs> platforms. So it went ahead and sold on Poshmark and I deleted it from the other platforms because it was getting so much attention over there. So that was my last sale on Poshmark. Let's go over to Mercari. Okay, so the first thing that sold over on Mercari was a Coach Signature diaper bag. And this this diaper bag was 
absolutely gorgeous. It looked, it looked almost new. There was a little bit of wear along the bottom of it, I guess where um, someone was sitting the floor, sitting it on the floor or sitting in different places. Um, but overall the bag looked really, really great. It was so clean inside. And the person, they left me a really nice message. They were very happy to get this bag for $80. Next thing that sold was a Coach Derby crossbody bag. And I've had this bag maybe a month and a half, maybe two months. And um, it went ahead and sold for $40. I did want, I wanted a lot more for this bag, I did. Um, the bag is, it looks new to me without tags, honestly. Although it did get some attention over on Macari, over here on Macari, it didn't really get other any attention on my other platforms like Poshmark and eBay. And so when I got the $40 offer after sending out offers on it and promoting it, I said, you know what, if someone wants to pay $40, I'll go ahead and take $40 so that I can, you know, move it and get it um, out of my inventory because I just didn't know if anyone would show some interest in it. <laughs> Last thing that sold on Mercari was a Carl Lagerfeld quilted purse. And this purse is so beautiful. Um, Carrying, I actually carried this purse for a while and it really made me love Carl Lagerfeld bags. And I'm actually looking to buy me a brand new one because the quality of the bag, it's, you can tell it's thick and it's quality, but it's not too heavy. Um, it's just a really, really nice bag. I think it retails for around 228, 229. And um, I sold the bag for $25 because I did thrift the bag and I carried it for a little while, so. I had it up for around $58 um, on each app, but I went ahead and just sent out an offer for $25 on Macari because I just wanted to move it. And it was bought within like two minutes after I sent out the offer. So um, somebody actually bought that last night. So yeah, those were my sales on Macari. Let's get over to eBay. When I tell you guys, eBay and Mercari have been really improving for me and I don't know if it's because Poshmark slowed down and everybody started engaging more over on eBay and Mercari, if that helped. But Mercari has improved so much for me this week and eBay has too. I normally get maybe one sale a month on eBay but I've gotten I think two this month so far. But this week, I sold an Acris Punto blazer and I had this blazer up for maybe 110. It might have been 110 I put it up for. And it ended up selling for $82. The person sent me an offer for $82 over here on eBay and I accepted the offer. So I was really excited about um, selling this Acris Punto blazer. It didn't get a lot of attention on Poshmark, which is surprising. This is a really good brand. But over here on eBay, it did get quite a bit of attention. So that's another thing. Um, I know that a lot of us are dealing with slow sales, but cross listing can really help you with that. Um, not depending on one app to make all of your sales and just diversifying and putting your items on different platforms. This will help make sure you can just at least keep your sales stable and you might not be selling as much as you normally sell, but you can at least keep things somewhat stable and sell your normal, somewhat normal amount. So that's kind of key for me. Let's see, how many items did I sell? This week I sold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I sold nine items and I normally sell 10, so close enough. Um, I like to keep it at around 10 or more but nine, I'll take it. And it's a good sign that things are picking up for me. I made a total of $458 for the week, which is decent for me. Of course, I would like to increase that quite a bit. My goal is to make at least 1K a week here within the next two months. And a way that I am working on doing that is by increasing my inventory. So I have around 250 listings on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark. And I'm working towards getting 300 listings for the month of March. So for the month of March, I will be getting at least 50 more items to add to my inventory. I'd like to add at least 100 items a month to my inventory. That is my goal. And I've noticed just with increasing my inventory, 
I have more consistent sales and because people have more things to choose from, quite frankly. So um, that is my goal for increasing my sales and so far it's working. I think once things really stabilize over at Poshmark um, with the algorithm, then my sales will increase even more. So I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, so far I'm happy with the sales for this week. <laughs> We did what we needed to do. And next week, I'm looking forward to making even more sales. So stay tuned. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my vlog now. And you guys can go ahead and hang with me for the day on all my reselling shenanigans. <laughs> Good morning. So, ooh, I feel like something's in my eye. Something in there. It's Monday morning and y'all, I have so much stuff to do today. Um, yesterday was such a long day. Um, I was on Prime Lister all day, cross listing over to eBay, cross listing over to Macari. I think I sent about 130 items over to eBay and about the same over to Macari. So I spent practically all day doing that and I'm pretty exhausted from it. I still have some things in uh, my drafts on eBay that I need to complete today. So that's that. So this morning I am packing up two orders. I have two orders that I've already packed up from over the weekend and I have two more orders. I have some pants and what else did I sell? I sold a jacket. So I'm gonna pack those up and get all this taken over to um, the post office. And um, after that, after that, I'm gonna swing by the Goodwill. Y'all be fiending to get to the Goodwill. It's crazy. It's like an addiction. <laughs> an addiction that makes me money. Okay, let's get back here and um, get these packages back up. So here are my two packages. I like to just stack all my packages on this little thing. It's right up under my TV. And that's normally where I put my packages uh, the night before when I'm getting ready. Okay, so I found my Madewell jeans. Looking good, looking good. I like to make sure that um, any tags from wherever I bought it are taken off. And this has a little bit of lint on it. Especially since they're black pants. So, I like to make sure the customer gets the stuff looking, you know, really good. So, we're gonna get all this lint off. See, already looking like new. That's what we wanna see. Because I know when I get my items, when I shop online and stuff, and I get my stuff in the mail, I don't wanna see nothing with lint on it. Like, no, and these are brand new tags. Just gonna get all this lint off these legs. We're good on this side. So this side. But tell me, y'all, have y'all ever shipped something out and you have um, the tag from the store you bought it on there? I mean, that would be that's like, oh, it's like my worst fear. Something that happens. <laughs> I also have this anxiety when I'm packaging up my stuff. Like I have to double check every time. Like I pack something, I have to double check. Maybe it's the OCD in me. Um, like I'll pack everything in, and then something in my mind will be like, uh-uh. Go unpack it. Go look. Go make sure there's nothing else in it. <laughs> nothing else in that package like make sure you didn't pack up some the tape or pack up some i don't know i just feel like i have to double check everything i just always want my customers to have a good shopping experience with me and a lot of people do compliment me on how i ship my items and they always tell me how beautiful packaging and stuff so that's like a standard i want to keep up Okay, so we have what the Nordstrom tag on here, and we have the Madewell tag, and that's all we want on these jeans. Yes, 
It looks so good. So what I like to do is I use two poly mailers. One is just for the item to slide into. I want to do it. I'm gonna do it like that. One is just for this item to go into, and then I put this bag inside of another one. To me, it just adds an extra layer of safety to the item. Because, you know, you don't know everything that it goes through in the um, in the, um, the USPS plant. And then I put on my 77 VR sticker. I'm giving this uh, item just a regular packaging. doesn't need a bow. It's just some jeans. When I have like just some jeans or just a t-shirt, this is how I pack my stuff. Okay, let's go over to Poshmark, orders. Download shipping label. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that printed. Um, and I just have an old fashioned way of, of putting my labels on. I just print it and then I um, tape it on. My goal is to get a dyno, I think it's dyno, or the Rolo. I've been, I've been hearing good things about the Rolo printer. I like these thermal printers. and um, So that's the goal. I have like a, 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 a business wish list, per se. But right now, those things just are in the budget. I'm just more concerned with making money, saving money, like that. But so I think the dyno is close to 300 the roller might be a little bit less than the Dymo printer, but yeah. So yeah, I have like a, a business wish list that I will eventually get before the year is over. But for right now, we're just working on having sales. And for any anybody that's starting a resale business, don't feel pressured to get all of this new stuff. All of these fancy little um, things that people use. Don't feel pressure to do that. Focus on getting your money and making your money and learning trends, learning what to pick up. That's really what's the most important. Um, but yeah, like I said, still a goal to get one so that I don't have to go through this where I'm having to tape up all sides of, <laughs> of my label. I think it just saves time and I, in a way it saves money because you're not using all your tape and paper and your ink but you know for right now this is just a simple way of doing things for me okay. so I just go ahead and slide this in And I just love poly melons. They just make my life so easy. Take off the strip. And fold it over. Oh, this is beautiful. And it's sold on eBay. Look at that. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna check for some tags. Um, I don't see no tags on here nowhere. This is the last thing you want. I try to make it a practice as soon as I come home I try to get any tags off of my stuff and then steam but every now and then something will slip through the cracks okay what I like to use for things like this jacket is I have huge plastic bags and I get these bags from the dollar store. I had tried to order bags online and on Amazon. I never found anything that I quite liked as much as the dollar store and dollar tree bags. And these are just um, the gift bags that you get from the party area. So it's just this large bag. And I like that. I have a really nice piece of ribbon. I actually got this ribbon from Amazon. So I like Amazon's ribbon. <laughs> um, I find that the ribbon gives it a more luxurious energy and it just, it gives it a vibe. 
and that's my colors too white and black for 77 vintage raw so um this is a way for me to brand myself a way for me to make my business a little bit more memorable to the shopper okay so we have our bow on there and i'm gonna go ahead and brand it with my 77 vr sticker So that is the 77 Vintage Row experience as far as packaging. It's simple, but it's super pretty. Makes you feel like you're getting, um, you know, just something really luxurious. Hmm. So that's how it is in there. It's pretty flat. I'm gonna add some dunge paper. Just to keep it from bouncing around. I think that might be my last roll, so I need to actually order some more. I'm gonna go to eBay and print off this label. eBay kinda take you through some changes just to get your label. I feel like once the person pays for the label, then you shouldn't have to go through technically like you're buying it. Okay. Your postage costs. So my eBay discount was $1.69. The postage cost is $12.65. Total $10.69. Total paid by buyer $94.65. Okay. It's like another language for me. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Can y'all see me? So, I'm gonna go ahead and get this finished up and I'm gonna get up out of this house. Get to the post office. I just dropped that stuff right at the counter. Some days I'm like, oh, let me get a receipt. And then other days I'm like, no, I'll just take this stuff. It was only like one person in there. So it wasn't too bad of a wait. I just didn't feel like it. So, I want to go over to the Goodwill, but I am starving. And I'm thinking about getting some sushi out this, this grocery store I go to. They have pretty good sushi. They have like a tempura shrimp roll. And I'm craving the taste of a tempura shrimp roll. Um, so I think I might go over there and get one. And then go over to Goodwill. That might be what I'll do. But yeah, just finished dropping those, those packages off. Hopefully I get some more orders by the end of the day. For my what's sold video for this week. And um... I'll start filming that tomorrow morning, the What's Sold video. So I'll film it on Tuesday, edit it Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll post it on Thursday morning. Um, I normally like to make my content ahead of time, like have a couple videos in the vault, but since I've been doing weekly What's Sold videos, I kind of have to wait right up to the time to create it so that I have all my sales included and then go from there. So that's kind of changed the way I'm, I'm making content these days. But, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship and becoming a full-time reseller and kind of why I chose this route. Um, I chose to become a reseller for a few reasons. Um, out, of, out of necessity, I chose to become a reseller, but also because um, I do enjoy shopping. I, I love thrift shopping. I've always thrift shopped pretty much most of my life. And... I'm very much so into fashion, I'm into trends, and so it just felt like a natural thing for me to become a full-time reseller. I love shopping, I love uh, looking for clothes, I like putting clothes together, I'm, I'm a fashionista myself, even though sometimes I come out looking crazy, I do 
like fashion I do like clothes um and I also have experience with packing and shipping orders I've worked in warehouses before I've pretty much done this where I've had to pick orders and pack orders and um I've done it all before so it kind of all just came together plus I went to school for business administration I have a bachelor's degree in business and I wanted to put my degree to use and I couldn't quite find a lane out in the world where I could put my business degree to use and then I always eventually wanted to have my own business I have other business ventures and other business ideas that I I plan on implementing within the next couple of years but for right now I, I want to focus fully on uh, being a reseller full-time reseller and I've always had that entrepreneurship mindset and I've never been a nine to five person. I never have. And when I finished when I finished um, college, I was about to say high school. When I finished college, I noticed that pretty quickly that I was not a nine to five person. But I said, you know what? I'm going to give it some time. I'm, I'm going to give it some years. And so I kept trying. I kept going through the motions of it, and I was terribly unhappy um, in, in jobs that I had post college, and I was terribly depressed. And I couldn't understand why I said well am I lazy and I thought to myself well no I'm not lazy I'm actually pretty driven and I make goals and um, I reach my goals every time and so I knew I wasn't lazy and then I said well is it me is something wrong with me because everybody around me is comfortable doing a nine-to-five everybody around me is comfortable clocking in and and getting PTO to get time off and taking vacation to get time off and in my mind I always said something is wrong with this some, in my mind something was wrong with it and that doesn't mean it's wrong for everybody everybody's different some people enjoy the comfortability and the stability of a nine to five job I just never did and in my mind I said I don't want to ask another human being for time off of work I don't want to if I don't feel good one day I don't want to have to call in and tell them I don't feel good I can't come in today and have to deal with you know my uh, manager or being disappointed in me or being upset about it I just wanted to have more control over my life more autonomy over my life and more control over how I make money I don't I don't I never want to depend on a job to to keep my life stable because jobs come and jobs go and I'm sure you guys have experienced this where you might have a job one day and the next day you don't have a job so jobs are just to me in my mind they're not stable <laughs> and um, they can be fickle and I just don't put my trust in in nine to five jobs I never have and so entrepreneurship it was just a mindset for me I wanted to create I wanted to have that control over my life and that's what being a full-time reseller gave me it gave me more control even though being a full-time reseller things can fluctuate sometimes slow sales can slow down sometimes they can really increase as long as you um, do your due diligence and work really hard and save um, you can get through those those areas those times where you know sales slow down a little bit but yeah I, I just I want to speak on that because I feel like sometimes when people look at us or look at anybody that's in entrepreneurship not just resellers but when they look at people in entrepreneurship they think you know just go get a regular job and we are just not nine to five people many of us we're just not and the world needs more entrepreneurs they do and the world also needs people that want to do a nine to five because we need those people we need people that go to work every day and and um and keep companies afloat and keep restaurants afloat and and retail stores afloat we need those people but we also need entrepreneurs and i just wanted to take this time to say you know what we do is important and um many of us well some of us this is good for our mental health it's good for not only our finances because many of us do pretty well with it but it's good for our mental health it's good for our work-life balance it's good for our family life um it's just all around a fulfilling job so kudos to us and kudos to the nine to five people yeah, I'm about to give me some sushi. Because <laughs> I'm super hungry. 
it's time to get up out of here. this sushi looks first of all I got this really good juice it has orange pineapple mango apple and acerola and it's really good the last three and a half months I haven't been consuming um, any kind of drinks with sugar in it like full-on cane sugar in it so every time I go to the store I get like a fresh juice or something so this is how it looks. Here, I need to take the casing off of it. I got two of them. And I have a really good sushi restaurant in my city. And this is, this tastes just like that. Like it tastes really good. They have professionals in the store that make the sushi. Um, so it's not like just some thrown together stuff. Hope you guys can see it. It's pretty good, huh? Doesn't it look nice? It looks so good. And it tastes even better. I'm gonna take a bite and then I'm gonna finish eating. <laughs> I kinda wish they wouldn't put these packets inside of there because it kinda just makes a mess. Putting the packets in here with all the sauces and stuff, it just gets all over it. I need some soy sauce. I have to use this. Okay. So, I'm gonna get the first roll. Dip it in the sauce. Oh, it's falling apart. Mm It tastes so fresh. There's that crunch, the shrimp taste, the wasabi and ginger. I hope y'all having a good lunch wherever y'all at. Because mine is hitting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay, so I'm ready to pick out. <laughs> I'll see y'all in a bit when I... Before I went into this Goodwill, I got the car and my phone dropped and look at the back of it. Look at the back. And the front is cracked. The front has been cracked like at the bottom, but the back is shattered. It's like, it's high key about to be time for a new phone. I've been holding on to this 8 Plus for about two, three years. And I'm a person where I'm not getting a new phone until I destroy the old phone. That's just how I am. I don't believe in getting phones every year. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm not getting a new phone every single year. New phones are nice, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go get me another phone because ugh, I don't know. I may, keep, I may not get another phone, but it's just annoying when your phone is all cracked up. So y'all, I went into this store and in the first hour, y'all, I didn't find very much of anything. And I kept going and I found a couple items. I don't know how, how I feel about this shopping trip, but I found a couple of items and we're gonna see what we can do with them. I couldn't leave this store with nothing. So I think we're gonna start making car hauls a thing on this channel because going home and setting up just to do a haul, I don't see the point of it. I mean, we already sit down at the house to do the what's Hold videos, so when I get these items, we need to do it on the spot. So that's what we're gonna be doing on this channel. Okay, so the first thing I found was this cute little t-shirt. It's a Rolling Stones t-shirt. Isn't that adorable? And it has lips and a tongue. And I'm not really big on buying t-shirts, 
But since this said it was made by the Rolling Stones, I'm guessing they have, the band has a, some type of t-shirt company. And it wasn't just made by some random t-shirt company. I went ahead and picked it up. Plus it's cute and it has all this, it's like design on it. So we'll see what happens with that. Next, I found some Madewell jeans. These jeans were actually made in 2017, so they are a little bit older, but I'm always gonna pick up Madewell. Um, like y'all just saw earlier, I just sold some Madewell jeans. Of course, they were new with tags, but um, these are still cute. They're like a grayish color, and they're skinny jeans, so I'm always gonna pick up Madewell. Next thing that we have is, I found this cute top, and this is something I'd actually wear. Um, it's a new with tag. Chico's top and I know y'all probably can't tell but it ties in the front it has these little ties and the tag says it's regular $69 to size 3p so that's cute you could wear that with a skirt or you could wear it with some cute jeans so got that little cute Chico's top next I looked in the underwear in the sleepwear area and I found, found this little lingerie set and the thong was still snapped up inside of the, the top part. So that's how I knew it was new without tags. The brand is called Avid Love. So I don't think it's an expensive brand or anything, but I had a little set like this some years ago and it sold pretty quickly. So it's just like the top and then a thong. So, um, I try to look into sleepwear and, and see what they have because sleepwear has some gems. And sometimes it's not always about like how much I can make off an item. Sometimes I just want stuff that'll sell quick and I think that'll sell pretty quick. This next item I found is a new brand that I've actually never picked up. It's called Pesarico um, Tricot. I think it's Tricot. Pesarico Tricot. And this brand, I just I just Googled it, and this these sweaters, they go for around $300, $200 to $300. Um, it has this really nice embroidered stones at the bottom of it and like a silky, slippy, textured piece at the bottom. So it's different. When I first looked at the sweater and I touched it, I knew it was something nice, and then I looked at the name and I was like, okay. You can just tell most of the time. Once you start touching different materials, you can tell when you've got an expensive sweater in your hands versus like something um, on the lower end of the spectrum. Next, I found this Bahama Mama. Hold up, this says it's a sundress. This couldn't be no sundress. Ooh, child, I'm just in this in this place picking stuff up. I don't know. I thought this was like a um. A cover up, but it's a sundress. I guess it's like a mini, mini dress. Sundress. And um, new attacks. And it ties around the neck. Size medium. I don't have nothing showing like how it was originally. I've noticed in the Google, they'll always take off those prices showing. Well, on some of the items, they'll take off the price of the retail. And then they'll leave the rest of the tag. I don't know why they do that, but that's just their business. Next, I picked up some bras. These bras, what's the name of these bras? Essential Body Wear. Now, I looked these bras up and I saw them selling for like $30. So hopefully they do good. The size is 32G. And I got two of them. I want to start loading up on bras and stuff. As long as they're new, I want to load up on them. So, last time I got two bras. And this time I got three bras. There's a third one I found. This is called Just My Size. And it was in this box. Somebody tore it out, but then I saw it separate and I was like, oh, there's the box. So I put it back in there with the box. Oh, look at that. It has all of these areas to snap. So you got a lot of back coverage back there. Looks like that's where the tag was hanging. 
But um, this is how it looks. That's a nice bra. Let's see, what size is it? Can it fit me? 42 double D, probably could fit me. As busty as I am. <laughs> okay, last but not least, I found a Dana Buckman um, cardigan and it's brand new tags. That's mostly what I try to pick up, y'all, when I go into the Goodwill. I try to find the new stuff. Um, if I can find a, a really good brand that is a new tags, I'll pick that up. But if I can find something that's a good brand and it's new tags, then I feel like I didn't, I've done something good for the day. So this is an extra large. It's just a thin little cardigan. So that completes the haul. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna see what else I need to get into. I'll probably go home. I'm gonna get all these things posted today. I'm gonna try to. No, I'm not gonna try, I eat. I have like a whole bag of stuff sitting at the house from last week that I have not posted, that I haven't steamed. And that's the issue with um, shopping all the time because I love shopping. That's my favorite part of this job. The other things can sometimes fall to the wayside like the steaming and the posting and if you're not posting you're not making any money so i'm gonna go home i'm gonna work on these two piles of clothes and getting them up and then i'm gonna cross list them to each app mercari and ebay since i've already done all of the other cross listing yesterday i don't want to get behind so i'm gonna post and cross list um try to get this all done for the day i actually when i was in the goodwill i checked my Poshmark and I made a sale so I need to go home and pack that up I'd like to get it out today but I might wait till tomorrow morning I try to get all my orders out within a day so it might have to go tomorrow morning I mean because I'm sure I'll get some more sales for the day so I might just wait till tomorrow but yeah y'all it's 119 ugh Sometimes I feel like I just don't have enough hours in the day to get everything done. Even when I get up super early, it can be like overwhelming. So it's 1.19 and I need to get all this stuff done and I need to go work out for like an hour and a half. Maybe I'll go work out, then go home, and then post the rest of the night. I think I'll do that because I gotta put my health first. So I'm gonna get going and y'all probably see me back at the house. We'll be talking about something back at the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs>